I'm Rob LaCuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby, here with Nikolai Nick Baxter, who co-wrote the Oscar shortlisted song Beyond the Shore from Coda, alongside co-writers Matt Dehan, Sean Heater, and Marius de Vries. Firstly, Nick, congrats not only on making the Oscar shortlist, but you won the Best Independent Film Original Song at the Hollywood Music and Media Awards, so congratulations. Oh man, thank you so much. Yeah, it's been an it's been a real thrill and a journey with the movie. It's it's really great to have it connected to a movie like this, to a project like this. That's that's so important and powerful. So it's been a treat. Yeah, absolutely. Like the reaction to Coda has been really quite extraordinary. It's a very uplifting, heartwarming film. It's a film where we learn about um, you know a hearing person in a family with um, deaf adults. Um, it's it's an extraordinary film, and I just wonder then, given the poignant and uplifting note that the film ends on. Um, I also kind of thought it felt slightly bittersweet as Ruby goes off to college. Your song plays over the film's end credits. So how did the tone of the film's ending influence the song? Yeah, so I mean, it, it actually wasn't part of our, our plan from the beginning to have this original song. It was something that you know, Sean's idea as we got further into post-production and the edit came together and the story was becoming clearer the arc and the emotion of the film and um you know we got towards the end of the the edit and realized there was that you know you're wanting more from ruby's character um the film ends but it's it's a new beginning for her character so we you know we thought in a perfect world it'd be if we could write a song from her perspective years later that would be amazing and normally we wouldn't get a chance to do something like that because uh you know it was last minute and we we're heading into the dub but covid was hitting right you know right at this time as well so it actually gave us a little bit of extra time to write this song and to to give the end of the film the the care that it deserves which was great yeah and of course it's it's um sung by amelia it's it's a really um like i felt like it's contemplative and it's got this beautiful melodic guitar solo um that underpins it and it remains its backbone while other sounds start to elicit emotion as it progresses but my, I'm curious, why it's why, where does this decision come from to underpin a song like this with this meditative, pensive guitar solo? For sure, yeah. I mean, I think it was a little bit of a function of, um, you know, it, it was really just me and Marius uh, that could play on the song. There was no musicians available, so we had to keep it yeah. simple. And I think the song was supposed to be simple. I mean, it's intended to be this character Ruby writing a song from college years later in the city. So, you know, what would she do? What would she have access to? So we wanted to keep it simple, keep the production simple, but yeah, that rolling arpeggio became the foundation for it. You know, it reminded us of the ocean, of the tide, of the rolling tide, and it gave it a sort of mom momentum and a pulse that worked really well as a foundation for it, but also left a lot of space for Amelia's voice to shine, which was the most important thing. And, and it certainly does. In the um, <clears throat> the song plays like an ode to family and also of coming to, uh, to coming of age, uh, two themes throughout the film. But, um, I'm fascinated by the lyric, the main lyric, I guess you'd say, move me like the tide when we chase that sky beyond the shore. Um, what's the ultimate message behind that particular line? Because it's, it's obviously that the, the the title of the song but um it's very evocative and and it's a really interesting lyric to to um, feature in the song yeah so that was the first metaphor that that sean came up with as we were brainstorming trying to figure out what the song should be and um you know just put ourselves in ruby's shoes years later uh where's where's her head's at she's probably reflecting back on her journey and her family and um you know craving some of what was such a big part of her life uh, being out in the ocean, being with family, and um, you know, I went I went to Berkeley too, so I, it was easy to tap into some of that. It's such a big change going into the city, and uh, you know, you miss some of the rhythms from your childhood. I, I grew up in the woods, so to go from being in the woods all the time to being in the city, it's it's a huge change. So that was helpful to tap into some of that. But for her, you know, you see her throughout the film. She's waking up at three in the morning every single day to go out to sea to fish with her family and to have that taken from you and it's a drastic change so you know we wanted to dig into what parts of the ocean would she would she be craving and and the tide was an interesting analogy to, to dig into the cyclical nature of it the cleansing nature of it you know the to go out and to come back and the perspective that that gives and the 
the cycle of that is probably something that she was missing, but also maybe um, reflecting on and appreciating, uh, you know, years later, seeing it differently than she did when she was doing it every day. You know, this song, like all the other songs that we're, we're talking about today, this song elicit, elicits emotion. <clears throat> it's very interesting how songs can do that, particularly in films. Um, this one makes me feel <clears throat> slightly melancholy, but also like hopeful and, <clears throat> and I, it just has a really loving um, perspective. And I'm just wondering, I think about the scene between Troy and Amelia, father and daughter. <clears throat> and that really, that really gets me because I have a daughter and, um, and, and uh, when we watched that scene together, like, we had a bit of a moment. And I just, you know, the, the lyric, wind and water, father and daughter, your stories are with me in all that I do. And now I'm writing one too. That's beautiful. And I'd love you to talk a bit more about what you're getting at there between that particular relationship in the film and also, you know, in general. Well, it's definitely inspired from from that scene for sure. And, you know, all the scenes between them, but that one in particular is, is so powerful. And um, I remember being on set when we shot it, just the whole crew, it just crushed all of us. It was amazing because um, the two of them in that moment were, were drawing on a lot of realism too and uh, and finding their way through it, you know, in a realistic way, in, in the way that it's written. Um, so we definitely wanted to tap into that. It's one of the more powerful relationships of the film and, I guess the perspective for Ruby is to just, it's more appreciation of it in hindsight. You know, she's, there was so much happening to her in the story where maybe she couldn't fully recognize and appreciate that relationship. Um, so she's reflecting now on how important, you know, the father daughter relationship was, how much it shaped her. Um, you know, there's the other line in the bridge too. And in your eyes, I could see there was more to me. Um, you know, that's also about yeah. her father as well. So it's, yeah, we really wanted to tap into that relationship, the father-daughter relationship from a place of reflection. Yeah, like, it's just amazing how <clears throat> you think you're so tough and, you know, no, nothing can get through, but a song like this and a movie like this, it just, uh, it really kind of cracked through the veneer for me. And, um, and it's just, I find it quite amazing that a song can do that. You, you, obviously, you co-wrote this with um, Sean, the director, Marius, the composer, and Matt. Um, what's the process like when you've got, you know, a bunch of people who are putting their, in, you know, their input into a song. How, how do you, how did you find that working with a bunch of people to get to this end result? <clears throat> well, this was, this was different than any other song I've written in terms of process because it hit, you know, we started writing it right as COVID hit. Um, so yeah. we couldn't do, we couldn't really do any of those in person, all get in a circle and throw ideas around and vibe off each other with, with the human contact and the physical component. So you know, there's a lot of Zoom sessions, a lot of late night texting back and forth and phone calls, but it was it was sort of a treat in a way. It was a gift because that that first month of lockdown, there was a lot of fear and it was a lot of isolation. And um, to be able to write this song during that time was was really nice. It was, it was one of the nicer things uh, to collaborate with these these super talented writers and, um, you know, to have this as a thread throughout was really nice and it probably helped the song at the end of the day we, we had time to, to go our own separate ways and process and throw lyrics at each other the lyric i would say took the longest the music came really quick the music i think once we had the idea to write the song came in a couple days and then we spent you know a long time crafting this lyric and uh yeah it it, it was it was a treat and um sean Sean had never written a song before, but she's so she's so poetic. She's such an incredible writer. But it was fun throwing it around with her because she would send these just incredible, incredibly poetic lines, but they just weren't singable. So I was trying to explain to her the difference between like poetry and a lyric, and you know finding ways to make things singable is a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun throwing it around with each other. That sounds cool because like us lay people would never that would never occur to us, right? <laughs> It'd be good if we could get a documentary about that one day, like a little short film and we just see how, how this played out. <laughs> but anyway, um, man, thank you so much for your time today and congrats on making the short list and we're going to bring you back shortly for our group chat. Thanks so much for having me.